This is Harding Football with Coach Ronnie Huckabee. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Bison's a 62-20 victory on homecoming Saturday at First Security Stadium. And Coach, what I would like to call a team victory. I mean, nine rushing touchdowns, and I thought your de defense played outstanding with four sacks against an outstanding quarterback from East Central. Those guys had done a great job all year long protecting the passer, Billy. And as you and I discussed a while ago, one of the big things about that football team is their turnover margin. Uh, you know, they were uh, leading the country in turnover ratio and the fact that uh, we turned the ball over once and we gained four, I think was huge in the outcome of the game. Uh, it was just a great day for the Bisons. Great, great opportunity for us to play in front of a homecoming crowd Albeit the fact that the weather had dampened that just a little bit, we still had a lot of old bisons here, and so it was really good, uh, really good to perform well in front of that group. I want to note Trendle Stevenson, his 32nd victory uh, as a bison, and uh, that is tops in school history. And it couldn't happen to a better young man. Trendle has been such a positive influence on our football program ever since he he came in. His first year, he missed. Uh, because of a shoulder injury that, that we had to have repaired. And uh, so he was not your typical redshirt freshman. He didn't get to go through all the fall stuff that a lot of those guys do. But Trendle's always been, uh, you know, a guy with a smile on his face. He comes to work every day. He's got a tremendous work ethic. He has been a great leader for this football team. You know, the, his, his teammates elected him a team captain. And uh, he's taken that role and, and has done a great job with it. Really proud of Trendle. And Coach uh, talked about homecoming and to get a victory on homecoming, always special and a chance right now for us to take a look at the sights and sounds at Hard Harding Homecoming. That was great to look back on, Coach, and I always enjoyed going down to the field and seeing your team warm up, particularly at home. What are the emotions like before a home football game like this, a homecoming game, and knowing you're going to play a very good East Central ball club? A lot of emotions, Billy. I think for our guys, you know, homecoming, as we've talked about, usually we have a great crowd there, and that, uh, you know, that includes a lot of parents, a lot of uh, kin folks, and. Uh, you know, the fact that we were playing a, a team that was also 5-2, and two, tied with us for second spot in the conference, uh, a team that had come off a tremendous home victory the past week against Arkansas Tech. So, uh, you know, I, I think our guys were obviously ready to play, but it, it was a great atmosphere. I just wish the weather had been just a little bit better to get that tailgating going out on the front lawn and the, and the crowd. But still, with all that said, we, we had a great day. Coach, the standings uh, behind us and Henderson State still leading uh, atop the conference standings. Now only two teams right behind them, a game behind Henderson State, the Bisons and Arkansas Tech. 
And we talked about that after the game was over, Billy, as we were talking, uh, you know, at the center of the field and having our post-game celebration. Really, the only thing that we can control is how we prepare to play Southwest Oklahoma this week, a team that has been very good at home. Uh, you know, they've had some very impressive wins, some dominant wins over Washtenaw Baptist at home, over East Central at home. So uh, we know we got our work cut out for us, and, and we're really anticipating the challenge this week. The Bisons had an outstanding homecoming game on Saturday, and we will start with first half highlights right after this. They'll test you, try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm, just wait and move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. One day when the glory comes, it will be ours. Dr. King, what's your next move? A march from Selma to Montgomery. Selma is loud for every man, woman, and child. We will not wait any longer. Run up a crowd. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Bisons a 62-20 to victory on Saturday on homecoming coach. As we look at first quarter highlights, your defense will be on the football field early. Now here's a big play by Scott Middleton early in the game. That was a huge play, Billy. Uh, you know, that kind of put them behind the sticks, forced them to attempt a field goal that they missed. And, uh, boy, that was what we wanted as far as our defense was concerned. We come out, we hand the ball in the first play of the game to Michael Latou. Uh, and that kind of became a theme for us. The be back had a great day on Saturday and we hand the ball off to Michael and he gets a 50 yard touchdown and the Bisons are off to the races. It was a first half full of big plays. No question about it. Maybe the, maybe the best that I've ever been a part of as a coach as far as one half of football. This is their answer, and they did a really good job moving the ball down the field and, and converted their extra point, and now they're ahead of a 7-6. to six. And uh, what a great job by our, by our uh, return team answering that touchdown. We come back out, we have great blocking for Corey, and Corey has fantastic speed. And, uh, man, he was gone. Now, when we looked at the film, we, we had a little question about that holding call, but, you know, that's... You know, we have to live with that. But the penalty I, takes the points off the right. board, but you still have good field position. Had great field position. And uh, here's Dwayne Carter. Dwayne had a great day for us on Saturday. With, he's following some tremendous blocking by the offensive line. So proud of Michael Gregg and his first start replacing uh, Eric Mitchell. And this is midline option, and this is Park Parish, one of the best runs that I've ever been a part of as a football coach, and maybe one of the best ones in Hardy football history. Uh, Great job, and you can see his teammates celebrating with him. And, and you know, those guys appreciate Park and his toughness and his leadership. Move into the second quarter now. Come back out. We hand the ball to Dwayne again on the first phase of the triple. And you know, he's these guys are are getting down the football field. And as you know, when they stop one thing, it opens something else up. And we get the ball pitched to Zach Shelley. And Zach takes it to the house. That's a 59-yard touchdown run. Zach had one carry for 59 yards and a touchdown. That's not bad production. Put your team up 20 to 7 at this point of the game. Right. Great pressure right there by Trayvon Biglow. Uh, defensive line really got after those guys. And we come back and run the option again, get the ball pitched to Eric Kelly. Good blocking by Eric Simmons out in front of him. And this is Larry Hill. Uh, great to see Larry get some playing time, and he took it in for his first touchdown as a Bison with some tremendous blocking on the right side. And the third B-back to score there in the first half. Yeah, like I said, it was a great day to be a B-back at Hardy. We forced the punt, and uh, again, getting stops. Our defense did a great job, and you know, Corey's trying to make something happen over there, and, and uh, we end up with the ball deep in our territory, but we hand it to Dwayne on the first play. 
and he goes 83 yards, and I guess this is modern football here. He's looking at the monitor. He's looking at the scoreboard and seeing where the guy is behind him. He veered off just at the last minute. Just like looking in the rear view mirror. Exactly. This is their field goal attempt late in the, uh, field goal attempt, excuse me, late in the first half that was no good. And unfortunately for us, we bring it out here and we, we, get, the, we get the option going to Eric Kelly. Uh, but as you'll see here in just a minute, we end up turning the ball over, I think, on this play. Uh, and that was, you know, that was the, probably the low light of the day for us offensively. They take the ball all the way down the field and throw a little uh, out route to the number two receiver, and he, he scores. And so uh, now we're going into the, into the halftime with a 34-14 to 14 lead. And coach, I thought maybe one of the, the key plays, the key series of that first half may have been East Central's first drive. They took the football right down the field, right. but your team, we saw the Scott Middleton sack right. and then forced the field goal attempt where they did not score on that first drive. And uh, your team then took the momentum, I thought, after that. Billy, that was huge. If you remember, you know, we had stopped them on third down, but we got a 15 yard late hit penalty on their quarterback, which set them up in great position. Uh, they're in the red zone, and on the first play after that penalty, uh, Scott came off the edge and sacked him for a big loss, put him behind the sticks. They ended up not converting and attempting a field goal that they missed. I thought that was huge for our defense. Kind of set the tone, really, for the day. And, uh, you know, they made some yards on us, but our guys did a great job of rising up and, and you know, ended up holding them to 20 points, which, uh, as it turned out, was plenty. So the Bisons with a lead at the half. We'll come back here in just a moment and look at second half highlights right after this. Psst, they're coming. Please, is everybody. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Hello and welcome back to this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Bisons with the lead as we go into the third quarter, Coach, and look at third quarter highlights, and your football team would uh, get the football to begin the third quarter. We would, and this is midline option, uh, which was successful for us all day long. Disappointed that we were not able to convert that first drive of the second half which is uh, you know, not our norm, but we punt the football away and you can see that Corey Bassett is doing a great job right there. Uh, and, and you know, proud of Chris Sarkeesian there with that tackle. Proud of the coverage on those guys. DeAndre Baines with a great pick. That was timely. Uh, you know, they were moving the ball a little bit. DeAndre has got a knack for reading the quarterback's eyes. He did a great job there and we come back, uh, run the triple, get the ball to Eric Simmons, which it was great to see Eric get some uh, playing time. He's been hampered by an injury. And uh, we come back and run the midline, which is, as I said a while ago, was a great play for us on Saturday. And then we hand the ball to Dwayne Carter on third and four, and he takes it into the end zone. That was a huge answer for us. Uh, and that, you know, at that point, I felt real good about us having control of the game. This is Jensen Jackson with the strip. <laughs> and I, man, Jensen was so close. I thought he was going to score. Yeah, we talked about it afterwards that, uh, you know, that's the, that's probably the shortest run in football history that required oxygen. Uh, you know, Park puts the ball in with the quarterback sneak and, uh, you know, we're 48 right there to 14, followed by a sack by Trayvon Biglow, who had a fantastic day for us from a productivity standpoint. And you mentioned up 48-14 as we head into the fourth quarter. Yeah, this was, you know, Interestingly enough, that's a great pick by Tony, Tony Beckton right there and a good return for a second there. I thought he was going to break that thing. Uh, 
But the good thing about this is that we got some of our guys in the ball game that, that really needed an opportunity to play. You can see the pitch there to Brandon Gates. Great blocking out in front of him by Colby Webb. We really thought he got in. And then Terrence Dingle with his first touchdown as a bison. It was so good to get Terrence some quality reps there at quarterback. We follow that up and now we're 55 to 14. Yeah, 15 points above uh, the Bison's 40 points per game average already right now. Good job by them on the play action. They get the ball to David Moore, who's a fantastic receiver for them. But, you know, our guys did a real good job of keeping him in check for the most part. This is Terrence on the second phase of the option. That was a critical conversion for us. Uh, come back, run the toss to Brandon. Colby Webb out in front. Lane Rogers with a block. Uh, you can see Brandon working really close there. And then we run the midline, and you can see the move by Terrence, and he gets into the end zone again, and that's his second touchdown. And, and uh, as I said earlier, great for those guys to get some quality minutes. And the exclamation point right here with Reed Jones with the with fumble recovery. Right. It, you know, our defense was able to come up with another turnover there late and ended up being the you know, the final score was 62 to 20. We talked about the B-backs, and you had two B-backs, both rushed for 138 yards, Michael Latu and Dwayne Carter. Right, and on very few carries, yes. both of them. Uh, yeah, it was a great day, and, and, you know, as I said earlier, Larry Hill got some snaps, which was great to see. You know, Larry's really been working hard in practice, and, you know, uh, we did not expect this, but, you know, prior to the game, uh, Ronnie Harlow came to me and said, Coach Matt Tennyson, cannot even move his head. He just got a crick in his neck Thursday in practice. Didn't hit anybody. It wasn't, you know, a contact injury. So uh, we had to hold Matt and, you know, that was unfortunate for Matt, but it was fortunate for Larry that Larry got in there and got to get some reps. And, you know, we are very deep at that position. And it's a position you need to be deep in if you're running this offense. And, and the offensive line also uh, with the depth there, obviously you have injuries throughout a season with that offensive line and, and they were dominant. And obviously when you score nine rushing touchdowns right. in a football game, the offensive line has to be a big part of that as well as the slot backs. I know they take a lot of pride in blocking as they well. They surely do and they've done a great job all year long. And you know, Coach Lee Edwards works with those guys and, and uh, you know, they, they are a group that does take a tremendous amount of pride in their blocking. And you know, you can take a guy like Zach Shelley who's yards per carry is off the chart. What you don't notice about Zach is what an awesome blocker he is. He is very physical at the point of attack. A lot of times those guys end up blocking defensive ends. You know, Eric Kelly, who you know weighs 160 pounds soaking wet, he'll probably be mad at me for saying that. But anyway, Eric uh, you know, gets in there and battles those big linebackers and defensive ends and does a great job. So really proud of those guys. And as you said a while ago, the offensive line you know, we lose Eric Mitchell after last week, who is who has been a dominant football player for us, who's been a you know a key to our offensive line success. And uh, Michael Gregg steps in, uh, Lou Duranda steps in. We were able to play Gavin De Los Santos at both tackles, which allowed those guys to get a lot of reps. And man, so proud of those guys and the way they responded. And we've had. Uh, Nathan Cash has been banged up a little bit. Bryce Bray has been banged up a little bit. And you have Keith Pledger. You have Seth McBride uh, step in. Ray Davis got some significant snaps. Heath Pledger got some significant snaps. And probably the guy that goes the most unnoticed is our tight end, Riley Hawkins. Uh, you know, Riley is a guy who came here as a linebacker. We asked him to move to offensive line slash tight end. And uh, at first, he was very resistant to that. And uh, you know how it is. If you consider yourself a defensive player, that's your mindset. Uh, sometimes that's a hard transition. But Riley has accepted his role. He has thrived in the position that he's been in. Uh, and that set for us, our tight end set, has been very effective for us. And a big part of it is, is the work that Riley has done. So 
Yeah, I, I am really proud of those guys and, and the way that they have responded to the challenge and uh, they continue to get better and that's good for the Bison football team. And obviously when you rush for 557 yards, you have nine uh, touchdowns on the football game. We talk a lot about the offense, but coach, maybe we should talk about the defense a little bit. What was the key there to their success? Because that was an East Central ball club offensively that was very dangerous. I think early we, uh, we got enough pressure on the quarterback that we got him out of rhythm. Uh, and that's a testament to our guys up front and our blitz packages that our defensive coaches put together, led by Coach Simmons. Uh, you know, I think coming into the game, they were second in the conference in the number of times their quarterback had been sacked, and we sacked them four times on Saturday. Got a lot of pressure, several quarterback hits. Uh, and generally, I think you, you combine that with the effect, effectiveness that we had on offense, where we get, kind of put the game out of reach pretty early, uh, got them out of their rhythm. I think you could tell on that first drive that they wanted to establish the run maybe and then throw the play action pass. But after we jumped out ahead of them several touchdowns, I think they had to, they had to rethink that. And uh, you know, when we know they're going to pass, we're pretty good at getting after the quarterback. And, and you know, we had some guys have, have great days doing that. One more thought before the break, the Park Parish touchdown run. You talked about that maybe being one of the best runs you've seen at Harding. Right. How important is a run like that for a sideline when they see the quarterback battling like that? If you, it was palpable, seriously. I mean, on the sideline, you could feel it. Uh, you know, it gave our team a tremendous lift. We were down seven to six at the time. And you know, when, you're, when your quarterback is out there battling people like that and running through tackles, and it just, you know, it just says a lot about his toughness, his character, his leadership. And it did a lot for our football team on Saturday. It, it really was a catalyst, I think, in us being able to put the game away early. So the Bison's now 6-2 and two on the season. We'll hit the road this week. We'll talk a little bit about this week's game. We'll also hear from some Bison's and get a question from a fan for Coach right after this. Sir, could you step over here, please? Is there anything you want to tell me? Like what? Like maybe you're out to protect the environment? Give scholarships to kids? Fight blindness? Help the elderly? Feed the hungry? Well, I only ask because you've got a little lion in you. See? Right there. Right next to uh, whatever that other thing is. Healing takes time. It also takes knowledge and expertise. Here we learn to reach out to and care for others through the application of medicine and true compassion. We understand that our mission is to take our training and abilities out into the world where they can and do heal the lives of others. For us, that mission began in a place of faith, learning, and living. Harding University. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. We get a chance this week to hear from Bison's after homecoming victory on Saturday, the 62-20 victory, and they were obviously in a good mood after the football game on Saturday. And we hear from Nathan Cash, Michael Latu, and Trendle Stevenson. We love the big runs. Michael Latu and uh, uh, Dwayne Carter, they just they had some outstanding runs, and that's just the greatest feeling for an offensive lineman. You know, you get, you get tired really easy because you, you do a lot of running, but and they had the big runs usually. Oh, I get to go to the sideline now and watch the defense do what they can do. I saw what, what we did in practice. You know, the coach prepared us very well for, for a game like this. We knew that, you know, how they were going to play us. So you know, everything, it felt like it was practice. I mean, I, I don't want to talk like, down on them. That they, had, they played a really good defense. But, uh, you know, the, the way we practiced all week was, you know, that's how it felt out, out there in the game. So A couple of your long runs, it looked like you had to break one tackle. Did you did you kind of feel as soon as you broke that that you you had green in front of you? For a few of them, yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, it's just the way I prepare and practice is. And as once I see the green, I just try, I try to take as much as, advantage as much as I can. I like playing against big receivers myself. I've been doing this since I was in high school. But Coach Trill put together a nice scheme for the defensive backs, and I mean. We just really had to outsmart the quarterback. He's a smart guy, real comfortable in the pocket, and we just felt like we stemmed around, gave him different looks that he hadn't seen on film, and it messed with his mind. So it, we perfected that. 
it was a happy locker room after the Bison's victory on Saturday. And now we get a chance to hear a question from a fan for Coach. And uh, Coach, here's this week's question. Hey, Coach Huckabee, this is Stephen Flanagan from Little Rock, Arkansas. And I have a two-part question for you today. And I, the first part is, if you had to pick a weakness for the offensive side of the ball, what would it be? And if you had to pick a weakness for the defensive side of the ball, what would that be? That's a, that's a good question, Stephen. I think I can answer that question, uh, answer both questions with the same answer. And I, I think it's just inexperience. Uh, you know, this year coming into the season, we replaced 10 offensive starters and we replaced a bunch of defensive starters. We had some injuries to begin the season that uh, affected us a little bit. And so uh, this season has been a process of learning how to play the game better. And uh, it's a testament to our players that they have continued to improve in that. We, we, we are still a work in progress, but uh, you know the game Saturday, I think, is reflective of how much progress we've made since game one. And uh, so, good question, but I really believe that, that our weakness offensively and defensively as we have gone through the season has just been experience, gaining experience, and uh, we hope that we're addressing that. Uh, we hope we address it daily, actually. And the way the schedule has fallen this year, where we are at on the road, at home, on the road, at home. We were at home this past week, so it only means that we're going to go to Weatherford, Oklahoma on Saturday, and that is a red-hot club and has played outstanding at home this year in southwestern Oklahoma. They really have, and, uh, you know, this is our longest trip of the year uh, this year because we don't go to Alva. And, uh, you know, the last time we went to southwest Oklahoma, we did not have a happy bus ride on, you know, on the way home. So. Uh, we know what these guys are capable of doing. They have been, as you said, they've been extremely hot at home, uh, very quality wins. I, you know, it, it, when you think about the fact that they beat OBU there 58 to 38, and uh, the game probably actually was not that close. Uh, it was a dominant performance by them. Uh, they have great receivers. They have a, a quarterback who has been extremely hot, Mark Evans. Uh, a stable of running backs and a, a really good offensive line. And then you combine that with the fact that they're playing great on special teams. They had a couple of special teams uh, touchdowns this past week. Uh, and defensively, uh, they're one of the top three teams defensively in our, in our conference. Uh, really good in the secondary, strong up front, active linebackers. Uh, so great challenge for us but that you know you want to be playing in meaningful games when you get to the end of October and the first of November if you are playing in meaningful games that means you're in the race and that's where we are so uh, hey it's a conference championship game for us that's the way we got to approach it all right coach congratulations on the victory this past week best of luck this week and we'll see you next week thanks that's all the time we have for this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. Don't forget the Bisons will be on the road this Saturday, 2 p.m. start time. We'll have the radio broadcast on the Harding Sports Network at 2 o'clock from Weatherford, Oklahoma. We'll see you next time. This is Harding Football with Coach Ronnie Huckabee.